Signs of fatigue. When the dog starts to show signs of fatigue, try the exercise one or two more times to see if the proper position can be achieved. And if the dog is still unable to perform, then it is time to stop this exercise. Form checkpoints in the stand. The top line remains neutral for the dog and should be parallel to the ground. The head and neck also are in a neutral position and parallel to the ground. The front feet are under the shoulders in the stand, paws neutral for the dog, with equal weight distribution from left to right. The elbows do not flare out. The stifles are under the dog's hips and pointed forward toward the front of the dog without rotating out. Form checkpoints in the sit. The top line is neutral for the dog. The head and neck also are in a neutral position and parallel to the ground. The front feet are under the shoulders in the sit. Pause neutral for the dog pointing forward toward the front of the dog with equal weight distribution from left to right. The elbows do not flare out. The stifles are symmetrically flexed under the dog and pointed forward toward the front of the dog without rotating out with equal weight distribution from left to right. Form checkpoints in the down. The top line remains neutral for the dog and should be parallel to the ground. The head and neck also are in a neutral position and parallel to the ground. The front paws should remain neutral for the dog with both feet aligned. The elbows do not flare out, with equal weight bearing distribution from left to right. The stifles are symmetrically flexed and pointed forward toward the front of the dog without rotating out. The back feet are neutral for the dog with equal weight distribution from left to right. Down to stand, it is acceptable to use either a lure or a nose touch to obtain the stand from a down position. The dog should rotate from a down to a stand without moving either front or rear feet to ensure they are engaging their core and rear assembly in their movement. Performing the exercise on an aerobic bench can encourage the dog to keep its feet still. When the dog's feet remain still, the core muscles are activated during the movement. The end position should be a symmetrical stand with front feet under the shoulders and stifles under the hips. There should be an equal weight distribution from left to right, both in the front limbs and in the rear limbs. The dog should have a neutral back and neutral muzzle. Stand to down. The dog should be taught from a natural standing position. The dog should move into a sphinx down without any foot movement. When the dog's feet remain still, the core muscles are activated during the movement. The front and back assemblies should move down as a unit so that the top line remains parallel to the ground. Hips are symmetrical and stifles and rear toes are pointed forward with an equal weight distribution from left to right in both the front and rear limbs. The muzzle remains parallel to the ground during the movement and the neck neutral. Performing the exercise on an aerobic bench can encourage the dog to keep its feet still. Kickback stand from a sit. The movement begins with the dog in a balanced, symmetrical, tucked sit position. When the dog stands up, the front feet should not move, eliciting all movement from the core and rear assembly, as the dog lifts and steps back into a standing position using the back feet. With a treat at the dog's nose or using a nose touch to your hand or a chin hold, ask the dog to stand. It may be necessary to move your foot toward the dog's rear feet to get a proper kickback. Also, when training this exercise, it is okay to touch the dog's rear toes to get them to move their rear feet into a neutral stand. This simply gives them more information as to what you desire. The end position should be a symmetrical stand with front feet under the shoulders and stifles under the hips. There should be an equal weight distribution from left to right, both in the front limbs and in the rear limbs. The dog should have a neutral back and neutral muzzle. Stand to tuck sit. 
When asking for a tuck sit, the front feet should remain stationary, while the pelvic limbs flex forward and tuck evenly under the dog into a square sit position. Hips should be square and symmetrical with the dog's head, shoulders, stifles, and toes all pointing forward. The back and muzzle should be in neutral positions. The aerobic bench can be used to encourage the dog to keep its feet still while the rear assembly tucks forward. Also, having the dog on a narrow surface helps to keep the stifles and feet tracking forward. A cool down is important to bring your dog's body back to its normal physiological state. A gradual reduction in heart rate, blood pressure, etc. lowers the probability of post-exercise disturbances in cardiac rhythm. Similar to the warm-up, the cool-down will promote arterial circulation, which aids in the effective removal of metabolic waste and rebalancing of oxygenation within muscle cells. To cool down your dog after your workout, it is recommended to go for a 5-10 to 10 minute loose leash walk. If you would like to learn more about additional exercises or how to find a certified fitness trainer in your area, please visit our website at www.fitpawsusa.com.